let's go over how to use this foam roller. And you also have the massage roller and one of those therapy balls. And we wanna go over today how to use this and then also once we've used it, I'm gonna give you a quick four stretches on how to stretch out the entire body. Okay, so to start, let's look at the different types here. Uh, very commonly, you're gonna find this right here. This is a pretty dense foam. Uh, this one right here actually from Amazon. They're kind of hard to find right now, uh, but the, for the most part, this is gonna be the density that you find. They do get harder, they do often get softer. So this one here, even though it's hollow, may look like it's gonna be a little bit more pliable, but it's actually reinforced on the inside. So if you use this one, it's just gonna be more difficult, so it's more of a myofascial release. You can kind of soften things up with this. If you've ever heard of the melt rollers, you can also use one of those. Okay, this here, this therapy ball, a little bit more dense than a tennis ball or lacrosse ball kind of. Uh, it does have a little bit of pliability though, but this can be used against the wall. I'm going to show you how to use this with your legs as well. Uh, and then this, of course, is the massage roller. Many different companies have made these here. What's very important is that it itself does not bend. You want to make sure that it has a nice solid piece on the inside. These parts will spin and we can use that on the legs, forearms, quads, and I'll show you everything with that as well. Okay, so let's first get into how to use this roller. Okay, so with this roller right here, I'm gonna go ahead and start out actually on the hips. I'm gonna make my way through the back, and then show you a quick routine on how to make your way through the legs. Very easy to memorize, and it's a quick way to get through everything. So to start, I'm gonna start with this on the hips. So I've got it underneath one glute. Whatever glue that's on, I'm gonna straighten out that leg. This hand is here for support and balance. This leg is also here for support and balance. So from here, I'm gonna roll down to the hip and then come back up in towards the lower back. Just focused on this one small part here. Not trying to go with the whole leg, not trying to go with the whole back. You also notice that I'm not doing both at the same time. Personally, I feel that you're gonna benefit more doing one at a time. Pay attention to the way each side feels. Many times, We've got one side that's stronger than the other side. When you start learning how to do this foam rolling, you're going to realize there's also one side that's tighter than the other side. So we want to pay attention to both and make sure that each one gets its own attention. So we're coming through here. Now I'm just going to transition over to the other side. Support the weight with the other half of your arm. And then this knee is bent to support your weight as well. Once again, I'm just rolling from top to bottom. The goal here is, again, not to get into the lower back. I'm not trying to get into my hamstring. Just going back and forth nice and light. Okay, we'll get to the rest of the legs, but since we're here, I like to transition right to the back. What's very important with this here, whenever you're doing any of this foam rolling, is that we don't roll this lower back at all. So the issue with that is there's not a lot of support there, and there's a lot of stuff that can be vulnerable on the inside. So instead, we want to work rib cage and up. So what I'm going to do is start at the bottom of my shoulder blades and my mind thinking to go down a little bit to find the bottom of my rib cage. From here, feet can go up into the, uh, go down, press your hips up into the air, and we're just going to roll back and forth. Now, a couple of cool things about this, you can just roll up and down. You'll certainly feel the benefit. I'm rolling back and forth. I've got my arms up. You can also cross the arms. You can also go wide. The goal here is just to move those arms back and forth, really just trying to open up all of the different joints of the back. You've got your scapula in there, which is also known as that shoulder blade. You've got your whole shoulder joint itself. We want to warm everything up. So I'm just going vertical. I'm also going to get a couple horizontals in. You also can put some weight on them and do the same thing. Here you're just really trying to open everything up, get those shoulders warmed up. Okay, so we're going to move on to the legs now. Now the goal here is to make our way, we're going to start on the lateral side of one and make our way full circle to get to the other side. So I'm going to start on my right side. So. I've got the lateral side of the right leg. I'm gonna bring my right elbow down to the floor and I'm gonna straighten out that right leg. This left leg, instead of being behind, I'm gonna bring it in front. The idea there is that I can also support my weight and I can control how much pressure I put into the outside of this leg. 
I like to start here because this is a very tight area for most. It's where the muscles of the front of your body meet the muscles of the back of your body, well, your leg. So it gets it to be a very tight band. Many people know where I'm heading with this, that IT band. So what you're gonna do is very slow and controlled, make your way from the thigh down to the knee, and then slowly come back. Now notice I'm not just automatically jumping in to both feet on top, okay? This is probably the most intense that you can do other than bending that knee and putting all the weight of that leg right on top of that point that you're trying to work. While you're working up to that, put that foot in front and give yourself a little bit of relief and roll up and down. Now, I've seen people go very fast, I've also seen very slow. It all has its own benefit. The slower you go, the deeper you can go with your massage and your way. So what I like to do is find that point that's nice and tight, put as much weight on it as I can control, and then very slowly I'm gonna bend that bottom knee. So I'm flexing and then extending the knee. What that's gonna do, I'll show you with both here, is it's going to stretch that muscle that you're pinning and then you're gonna extend that leg back. You're really gonna feel that muscle stretch. So you wanna do that at multiple different points along the outside of that leg there. So I'm once again, I'll even get one up close by the knee and I'm just really trying to stretch that muscle out. This may be a little bit intense in the beginning, but you absolutely will be able to get used to it Remember, these are just areas that are gonna be tight regardless, especially if you're sitting a lot right now. Now I'm gonna to transition to the front of this thigh that's on here, that's my right thigh. So all I'm gonna do is come down into plank position and open this leg out to the side. Now from here, simple transition, I'm now on the front. So you wanna then again, roll up and down. Once you've rolled a couple times, bend that knee. Okay, once again, really stretching that area. Okay, if you don't have the space, lift up, push that roller down just a little bit. And now we're in another part of the thigh. Once again, if you wanted to add weight, all you'd have to do is add that other leg. You can cross it to put it right over top. But remember the most important thing is you don't wanna actually lock yourself up. So we're not looking for a 10 out of 10 on pressure. I'm looking for about an eight out of 10 on pressure. Once you get to that pressure, you then again can really work that muscle by stretching the area that you're pinning, okay? I'm not trying to work on my abs right now, so you're not trying to really flex your core. You're just trying to focus on releasing any tension that might be up in the thigh, okay? Now from there, we need to go to the inside of the thigh. So. I'm going to turn the foam roller parallel, straighten out this leg that I'm not using, and I'm going to bring this leg up to perpendicular. So here again, I've got my thigh on it nice and tight. Now for the video's sake, I'm just going to go ahead and switch sides so you can see. The goal here is to get into the middle of that thigh. So I'm going to roll again, back and forth a couple times, and remember like I said, we want to pin and stretch. So that means pin, and then we got to stretch, use those muscles there. So you're going back and forth from right here. You notice I'm kind of right up close by the knee, just trying to really work into that muscle that's there. Then you can go a little bit closer into the groin, same thing. I'm going to flex and extend that knee and really get into those adductors there. You know what we're talking about when it comes to anatomy. We're going back and forth here, really trying to work into those muscles there. They can be really tight, especially again, if you're sitting a lot right now. Okay, so from this position, remember technically we're on this leg. The way we make our way around is you're just gonna go from this inner thigh over to the other side. So exactly what I just did. So you're just gonna lift up in your plank and switch those legs. We now have the inner thigh of this side. From here, once again, we've gotta make our way through the different parts of the thigh. So I've got the inner groin here. Then you can move the roller down, get more into the medial portion here. 
right on the inside of there, right into the meat. This kind of might be tight for some. Once again, if you find the tightest spot, pin on it and then flex and extend that knee. Last part would then of course be right down there close to the knee. We're working right into that medialis muscle. You kind of turn, you can turn the toes up and down just a tad, just to dig into there. And once again, we've got that flex and extend. Okay, so good after a leg day. But of course, with all this sitting, you gotta make sure that none of this tension, lactic acid, anything builds up around your joints, especially if they're used to lifting and working out on a regular and kind of things have changed recently. Great. All right, so from there, it comes to the top of the leg. So once again, I've got my other leg out to the side, not gonna be using it. From here, I'm going up and down to the top half of the thigh. Once again, if this area is really tight for you, you then want to flex and extend that knee. Okay, making my way down a little bit lower into the thigh, flex and extend. Again, if you want that extra tension, bring the other leg up and you still can flex and extend and really get into stretching that quad, especially if your knees are hurting, there's a good chance that you gotta foam roll your quads. Good. And to finish it out, I'm just gonna go ahead and go into the outside of that thigh. So in this position, I just go into my side plank. Once again, focus on that IT, not rolling back into the glutes of that hamstring there, staying on the outside, and rolling back and forth. Again, you can pin and then really flex, bend that knee, and stretch that muscle out all through the leg there. Really makes a difference rather than just rolling. You got three different methods. Roll, pin and wait, and then pin and move. Pin and stretch, whatever you like to call it to remember it. Great. Okay, so that takes us through everything for the quads and glutes and back. We of course need to get into these calves. Eight, control your breathing. Nine, exhale when you press back up. 10, time to go, come on. 11, 12, step out, heel first, step 